This is At Ease, the military podcast of Thomas Nelson Community College. I'm Gary Pounder, a member of the military team here at TNCC, and we've often talked about the educational journey here on the podcast, and we'll continue that conversation here today. And it's always very important to remember that for many of our military and veteran students, Thomas Nelson is often just the first step on their educational journey after Starting here, earning perhaps their associate associate degree at Thomas Nelson, they move on to a four year college and university to earn their bachelor's, and maybe even go on uh, beyond that to a graduate degree or degree, professional degrees, whatever their educational ambitions happen to be. So again, we're perhaps the starting point, the first uh, stop on their educational journey. And for veterans and students here in Virginia that uh, want to take that next step, there are certainly a number of really great options here in the Commonwealth of Virginia to include one of the finest options in the entire country, only just a few miles up the interstate from us here in uh, Williamsburg. We're referring, of course, to the College of William and Mary, one of America's oldest, uh, best known, and certainly most prestigious academic institutions. And from William and Mary, we have Charlie Foster, who is director of the Office of Student Veteran Engagement. We also have Anthony Ventura. Anthony is a student veteran who's currently completing his undergraduate education there at uh, William and Mary. And Anthony also began his uh, college career here at Thomas Nelson. So a bit later in the podcast, he will tell us about how he happened to come to Thomas Nelson and uh, begin his educational journey and then made that transition from TNCC to William & Mary. But first of all, Charlie, I want to start with you. Talk about, if you will, the Office of Student Veteran Engagement at William & Mary, how it came to be, how you came to enter that position, and basically the function of that office in helping military students and veterans make the transition to the College of William & Mary. Sure. Well, uh, Gary, first, thank you for having me on the podcast. Thank you for having Anthony. Also, you know, we're super uh, glad and appreciative of everybody's efforts in Virginia Community Colleges. Um, and we want to receive students who want to transfer to a place like William and Mary. And that's definitely the role of the Office of Student Veteran Engagement. So um, I came to the position uh, as its uh, first director. So the office opened in September of 2019. And it really came about because of students like Anthony. So um, when I first got to William & Mary in 2015 to get my master's in higher education administration, I met student veterans who were at the college and knew that um, student services for veterans specifically could be improved by having a full-time employee and having an office that would act as a one-stop shop for information and services. And so um, you, we, uh, along with those students and teaming with faculty and administrators and other staff members to form, you know, basically a, a um, critical mass of support for that effort. We, um, you know, after years of planning and advocacy, were able to open the office in September of 2019. And so I feel like it was a right place, right time um, initiative and my participation in it owes a ton to students, to student veterans themselves for advocating for themselves and working with the administration and working with their professors. Um, with me, you know, just, just feeling lucky to behold that and see what they're capable of, of. You know, I'm a veteran myself, so I am not surprised, but I am just pleased to be almost like a historian in that regard, to be able to tell the story of what they've been able to do and what they continue to do. You know, um, Anthony can talk about what it is that he does for William and Mary while he attends William and Mary, but it, it's, it's just continuing in that tradition. And so, yeah, the, the office is really, you know, came about that way. You mentioned uh, you have a military background yourself. You are a former Marine, if there is such a thing as a former Marine. Tell us about your own military background and then how that led to your own educational journey that eventually brought you to William and Mary. Yeah, sure. So I joined the Marine Corps after September 11th. I was actually in college at the time um, when the towers were were hit and um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it seemed silly to continue to um, go to school when I felt like the nation needed me just like the nation needed my own dad during Vietnam. So he was in the Marine Corps. I knew I wouldn't be able to face him 
if I had gone into any other recruiting office <laughs> other than the Marines. <laughs> so I did not shop down the whole strip mall. I really just went to the one and uh, I had a really good recruiter and he put me in for public affairs to because that's what he wanted to lap move into. So he aspired to do that job and he said, well, let's see if we can get that for you, which I've never forgotten. And um, I know recruiters often get a bad rap, but I have to give Sergeant Havard, wherever you are, um, a, a really good uh, kind of note in his in his SRB <laughs> for that. So well, now, um, um, your your job title, as I understand, in the Marine Corps as a part of the public affairs career field, you are actually a combat correspondent, as someone who would actually go into battle with your fellow Marines and document their activities. And I don't think many people on the outside realize that the military does, in fact, have military journalists, broadcasters in uniform that are trained to do this. And I've also got to ask you this, since you you know had the combat correspondent title, had you seen the movie Full Metal Jacket before you signed up and before you got that job? Yes, and I had seen it, and um, and so of course you get called Private Joker once people connect those <laughs> dots. And so I had seen it, but but the reason I saw it even before I knew there were jobs in the Marine Corps, I just went to the recruiter's office saying, assuming everything was infantry. But my dad um, told me to watch the movie and pay special attention to the part where um, Private Pyle shoots the drill instructor, and my dad says that's how you know it's a movie because in real life he wouldn't have died. The drill instructor would never have died. Um, and so, um, yeah, no, I, I saw the movie and um, Private Joker is really interesting. I became very interested in the story behind that. So there's a book by the guy who co-wrote it with Kubrick called mm-hmm. uh, Dispatches by Michael Hare. And so I read that and you learn all about the um, apoco- apocalypse now and things. And so Michael Hare was an embedded you know, journalist, too. So um, it, one, one note I will say about the Marine Corps Museum, which is right up the road, is it does have a cool um, fighting hole display where there's a combat correspondent down in the fighting hole with a typewriter, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're going to send dispatches. And by the, it could have been by telegram back then, but it's an old tradition, and I'm proud to have been a small, tiny little part of it. Now, at some point, of course, you decide you were going to transition back to civilian life, and you did. So tell us about making the uh, transition from being an active duty Marine to being a full-time college student and how that, again, would eventually bring you to William & Mary. Right. So I got out, and I was a student veteran, um, and I say I was a student veteran twice. So the first time was immediately after the Marines, um, and I went to a tiny little liberal arts school in Kentucky called Berea College. And Berea is small enough so that there weren't very many veterans. So there definitely wasn't a dedicated office or a dedicated full-time person, although there was support for non-traditional students. And I feel like all student veterans are non-traditional students, if not because of their age, then because of their experience. So um, so I felt like uh, I really relied on the other veterans there. There was an Army medic who was in one of my first classes. And we threw our service rivalry right out the window and stuck together. And he's still a great friend to this day. And um, and so, yeah, we supported one another. But I loved college and I went on to work at that school and um, tried to support uh, the students as best I could, you know, even as I was in a staff role that was kind of removed a little bit other than having student employees. So I worked at that college for a long time. And to to be able to become a director of an office, it became clear that I needed a master's degree. So I came to William & Mary for their higher education program, which I love. And one of the student populations that became super interesting to me brought me right back to my own experience as a student veteran. Because as I said, I met the veterans at William & Mary and they were um, they were working on higher education issues live right before my eyes. And so I jumped in with both feet and uh, began advocating because student veterans are transitioning just like the high school students are transitioning. But on top of that, they're transitioning out of the military. So it's really like two transitions. One is to a new place and it's an academic institution, a rigorous one in William & Mary's case. And then also, you know, uh, there's, there's an identity transition too where we're hanging up our uniforms, but keeping some of the practices that are close to our heart. 
you know, whatever those may be. Uh, Ace and I joke about shaving, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you, you get to make a decision once you get out about shaving. And that's just one of hundreds of little decisions. And so those transitions um, can be something where it's just nice to have a sympathetic ear, but then there's also lots of activities, programs, information that we can share. And so that's the goal is to give folks a suite of opportunities and services to just help them make that transition and support them all the way to graduation. Looking back on your own uh, journey, your own transition, what would you say is the toughest adjustment you had to make going from being a Marine, being a public affairs specialist in the Marine Corps, to being a full-time college student? And conversely, what do you think were some of the strengths you brought out of the military that helped you make the transition more effectively, more quickly than, say, an ordinary student might make it? Well, I will say w one of the qualities is um, definite, I definitely got all my class participation points in every class I was ever in because, you know, I know in the Marine Corps, you, you are not allowed to not answer a question. So if I was asked a question, I would answer it. And so one of the things I had to adjust to is letting other people answer questions sometimes, <laughs> you know, or resisting the urge to lead people who didn't sign up for me to lead them, you know, didn't um, ask for my recommendations and things. And though I might've been right, you know, college is for learning for everyone, you know? And so um, I had to kind of hit my stride in terms of letting my group members take on real responsibility because I just thought, okay, why don't I organize this for everybody? <laughs> you know, why don't I delegate the responsibilities to everybody? And um, nobody really complained, but they were really baffled. You know, my, my fellow students kind of looked at me askance and, um, and I had to give them the leash to make a mistake, you know, not in the group because obviously you don't want to sacrifice those points. And I know uh, Anthony can speak to this too, but you know, it was just this, it was a social adjustment uh, to my fellow students. And, um, you know, there was big communication you know, um, gaps because I had worked, you know, I had worked in the real world before. And so, you know, you had to kind of endure them saying some dumb stuff as they grow before your eyes, you know, because I was lucky enough to grow far away from lots of observers, <laughs> you know, in the Marine Corps with, um, with a lot of really close uh, knit units, you know, and teams. And so you kind of grew together in a smaller little glass fishbowl or whatever and um and the college students were trying to do that and so i had to let them and sure. that was interesting it's probably a good time to bring anthony into the conversation anthony is a uh, navy veteran uh anthony tell us about your military background and uh what uh you did during your time in the service and how that led you to where you are right now at william and mary sure so i started out um uh, in the navy uh, as a undesignated search and rescue swimmer, uh, and I got attached immediately to a frigate and did uh, counter piracy operations off the coast of Somalia uh, on VBSS teams for my first two uh, ships, which resulted in actually only a three year stint. But before I then cross rated to becoming a religious program specialist, uh, where I eventually got attached to the Marines, and I did five years doing that and had a great time. Being with the Marines was probably my favorite thing that I did in the Navy uh, and where we went to Libya and just got a lot of cool experiences out of that. I, I did decide, though, at year six or year eight after making E6 that it just wasn't it wasn't for me anymore. You know, the old saying that if it's if it's not fun anymore, it's time to move on. And I felt that I had reached that point. And um, I did encounter some cool new opportunities while I was with the Marines. It was the first time I ever got introduced to data analytics and the power that it provided uh, not only our military, but policymakers about making appropriate decisions that positively affected those abroad. So uh, I decided that I would pursue a career in that um, or at least an education in it. Um, and it was from that point I, I reflected upon my first deployment where on the way home from that deployment, I had an impromptu dinner with the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to Portugal while we were in Lisbon. 
And that, and I sat across at the dinner table from his aide who also went to William and Mary. And that was the first time the William and Mary seed got planted uh, for me. And from that point on, it was always uh, something in the back of my mind that, you know, a goal of mine was to, to graduate from that college. So when it came time to end my career with the military and begin somewhere else, uh, you know, I, I dead reckoned for William and Mary and researched. Uh, I knew I wasn't prepared to jump right into William and Mary. So I researched what community college is near there uh, that had uh, a close enough proximity to where I could be going to that college, but close to William and Mary and develop a relationship. And that community college was Thomas Nelson. So that's how I ended up deciding to get out from Camp Lejeune, move here to Williamsburg and attend Thomas Nelson. And you spent, I believe, a year as a student here at Thomas Nelson before moving on to William & Mary. Talk, if you will, about your experiences here at TNCC and how a community college can help a transitioning military member prepare for a truly rigorous, prestigious academic institution like William & Mary. Well, um, to, to begin, I found that Thomas Nelson was extremely supportive of veterans, both uh, faculty and staff. Uh, I, I even had a few teachers that were uh, reservists, or uh, I, I believe one of them was even a, a senior ranking member of the Coast Guard. Um, and this was just something he did on on the side, was be a professor at Thomas Nelson. So you will find great support um, and a very knowledgeable staff at the Veterans Affairs Office at both campuses, at Hampton or the Williamsburg ca- uh, campus. Um, They have very knowledgeable staff. So what I would say is that if you want to use Thomas Nelson as a stepping stool, stone, sorry, to transition to another institution, uh, you know, use Thomas Nelson as a strengthening tool. Uh, Use it to prepare yourself strategically. And when I say that, I mean that you want to prepare yourself uh, mentally for academia, right? I mean, coming out of the military, uh, we do endure a lot of things in the military that that you have to develop mental toughness to endure and physical toughness to endure. But when you transition to academia, it's a completely kind of mental toughness. It's it's a different kind of mental strength that you need to develop. And to do so successfully, I found that while at Thomas Nelson, I was able to do it by using that time at Thomas Nelson to learn Uh, time management techniques that actually worked for me. Everybody's different. What some people do to help manage their time to be successful may not work for you. So you need to take this time at Thomas Nelson to learn what those are for you so that you can apply them once you get to a more strenuous academic program like, you know, the programs at William and Mary. Uh, The next thing is I learned at Thomas Nelson how to use the resources that are that are available to me, uh, whether it's, you know, tutoring at math or a writing center or just a librarian to help you understand the appropriate way to do research. Uh, You you know, that is a gift that Thomas Nelson is giving to you to develop that skill before you go to those institutions, because if you got those skills down, you can step on campus day one of your first semester and know right where you're going and how to succeed in your assignments when they're given to you at William and Mary. And it did, it did pay off hugely for me as I, you know, I pulled about straight A's my first semester because I understood what those resources were and how to use them. And then finally, um, I would say that you need to understand where your point is, your stopping point is. And and what I mean by that is at some point, you're not going to figure it out. Thomas Nelson taught me where that was. So to, pr- to preserve time, because time and the amount of time you spend doing assignments um, can make or break you at William & Mary if you want to get good grades, you know, like you probably are at a community college or uh, that you're going through now. You need to understand when not to waste your time anymore and to just seek help from a person. Um, and, you know, those were all the three things that Thomas Nelson gave to me that that really helped me be a success so, thus far at William & Mary. You know, I'm a I'm a senior now. Um but I am maintaining a very high GPA, and um, I, I believe that I've been as successful as I am because I used Thomas Nelson as a strengthening tool. Uh, you have to challenge yourself smartly every semester. Don't be one of those people that's just trying to protect your GPA uh, because then you're not probably being challenged enough. And when you get to William and Mary, you're gonna get you're gonna get a hard 
a hard hit. You I, think know? You're, I think you're raising a very important uh, point there, Anthony. You're talking about challenge yourself, challenging yourself as a student, even here at the community college level. Speak to that specifically. How can a student who's aspiring to go to a more demanding, more prestigious academic institution, whether it's William & Mary, whether it's UVA, Virginia Tech, whatever, how should they be challenging themselves when they're starting off at a community college? So what I did is I, I adapted the old motto, uh, the only easy semester is last semester. <laughs> that's not really how it goes, but that's my version of it for academia. Um, every semester I made a, a little bit more challenging than the last. So that every semester I was learning something new about myself and I was kind of preparing myself uh, incrementally for the rigors of what William and Mary would actually be. And it has not let me down. The business school has definitely proven to be uh, a heck of a challenge. So, um, you know, I, I recommend that that's how you prepare yourself. You, you need to challenge yourself by not taking all the easy classes. And I hate to break it to you, when you get to William & Mary, um, especially if you're going to go to the business school or um, some of the more advanced programs like, you know, some of the sciences at William & Mary, you have to take certain courses together. And there's no easy way out. There's just – you either prepared yourself enough to handle it or you're just going to have to take a few punches. Sure, sure. Now let's talk about uh, you moving on from Thomas Nelson to William and Mary. You arrive on the William and Mary campus. You uh, make connections there with Charlie Foster and the Office of Student Veteran Engagement. What has that organization meant to you in your educational journey through William and Mary? So it's, it's meant everything to my experience at William and Mary. For starters, both Charlie and the then, um, I was, he did, did, uh, uh, Corey already graduate. Sorry for the pause there. Did, mm. when I, when I met you, Charlie, or was he graduating then? Uh, I think he introduced us, didn't he? So I think he, he did. He, he, yeah, yeah. So you were here for at least a semester while he was still here. Yeah. So I met the, uh, him at the gym and, and they quickly took me under their wing. And I mean, this was even before I was officially a student at William and Mary. Um, you know, they, yeah, I was working out at the gym there and told them that I applied. I did eventually get accepted, but they already immediately seeing another veteran welcomed me with open arms and were supportive right off the bat. And that's before I actually got my technical letter of acceptance. Now, once I got that and the office was up and running, you know, I've always had a place to go uh, at William and Mary that kept all the veterans connected and uh, gave us an extra resource or kind of a sense of community that allowed us to network appropriately to be successful where, um, you know, we're, we're facing a little bit of different challenges than the average student at school. For example, some guys are definitely still carrying around leftover gear from the pack, the proverbial pack that you, you, you gather throughout your time in service. And they need this place to be able to talk to people who can relate relate to them. Um, and I've, I've, and you know, you'll hear from other students if, when you get here that you know this office has saved lives, um, and it's just been a, a pillar of strength in, in in keeping us keeping yourself on track, informed, and and successful. You mentioned the importance of connectivity for student veterans on the William & Mary campus, on any college campus. Explain why that is so important and so vital for that student group. Well, I have to say that when I transitioned initially from military to uh, civilian life and particularly academia, um, it was extremely isolated. I mean, you feel very... Uh, I don't want to say you feel ostracized necessarily, but you do feel this um, sense of just not fitting in. You feel kind of isolated and uh, like you really don't connect with people the same. You you know you're you're the odd you know the kind of black sheep in the room, and and having that what we have at William and Mary that connectivity to other people like you, um, it really helps take you out of that isolation mindset to where you, you start to feel a little more at home, at easy, at ease, and um, you you really start to acclimate to the new climate and, and feel welcome. 
Charlie, let me bring you back in the conversation right now. Let's talk about the range of services that your office offers to the student veteran population there at William & Mary. Um, How do you build, beyond having a center, a gathering place for the veterans, how do you build that sense of connectivity, and what are the other support services you try to provide to help them connect, to help them get grounded, to make them successful in their academic efforts at uh, William & Mary? Right. Well, so we aspire to be a one-stop shop. And what that means, the only way to accomplish that is to take every meeting, (laughs) you know, so that means say yes to everything, meet with everybody. And that's what we did in the first year and continue to do as new people arrive at the university or, um, or if we, you know, get a lead on some program or opportunity that we didn't know about is we investigate that to make a connection, to have a point of contact in that office or in that world, that realm, and um, and then keep that, you know, keep that up to date. I won't be able to answer every question, but I bet you I know somebody who can. And I've been fortunate enough to have been around long enough that sometimes that's people a little bit up the food chain. And um, and so, you know, that, that stems all the way from President Rowe, our university president, taking a particular interest in veterans and making veterans a priority and really being the last and most important push for the office to open to begin with. And so um, so when it comes uh, to being able to answer any student veterans question, I feel like that's the only way to do it is to reach out and make connections with everybody. So that could be something that makes perfect sense, like our school certifying official for GI Bill Um, and other veterans benefits, vocational rehabilitation. Carolyn Ward is probably my best good friend at William & Mary, you know, because she and I need to be able to work in lockstep to make sure that there are no gaps in terms of people's tuition getting paid or their housing allowance. I mean, these things are vitally important. Like we think in a Maslow's hierarchy of needs, they gotta have that roof, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and they gotta be able to attend and pay tuition and everything else flows after that. So she's a partner who makes perfect sense. But what about res life? You know, if we think most veterans are gonna live off campus, do we need somebody who's over in the um, office of, that, that oversees the dorms, for example? And the answer to that question is yes, because student veterans have lived in dorms and they are interested in potentially being a, an RA, you know, a resident assistant. So um, a resident advisor, I mean. So basically that's, that's how you end up taking every meeting is you just never know what somebody's area of interest is gonna be. And so you say yes to everything. And, you, and, and, and I also try to attend really large meetings and do a short presentation to be on people's radar for when they have a great idea, then they can bring that to me. Because one of the things the student veterans um, uncovered when they first uh, you know, showed me the need for this office was that there were faculty and staff who wanted to partner with student veterans, whether it's for research or or for some other program, and they couldn't find them. They didn't know that there was a little uh, informal gathering place at this one computer in the library. And how could they know that? Well, now there's an office and it's in the student union, it's in the Sadler Center, and they can just come in the door and make that connection. And that's been, uh, it's it's a two-sided coin. And that's been a really exciting development too. Anthony, on your perspective as a student, what are some of the services through the uh, Office of Student Veteran Engagement that you have personally utilized and have really made a difference for you in your educational journey there at William & Mary? Uh, For me, it's definitely been the Cohen Career Center and how uh, that office has connected me with Tanya Nations, who has been helping me develop professionally um, and stand out you know, with everything from resumes to interviewing skills to uh, scouting out the best internship opportunities and actually achieving them. Um, yeah, that that has hands down been one of the best resources that I've been able to utilize through that office. On the other hand, what other resources that maybe are not readily available right now would you like to see available not only at William & Mary, but on other college campuses around the country, maybe even here at Thomas Nelson. You know, we try to serve our military and student veteran population as best we can, but again, we're always finding ways to improve. So, you know, as someone who's well along in their educational journey, 
what other services, what other features can colleges and universities add that will make that journey that much easier for a military member or a student veteran like yourself? Well, um, to start, uh, not every college has a Charlie Foster or even an office that they can go to for um, for themselves that is particularly set up for student veterans. So what I'd like to see is, is, is a Charlie Foster and an Office of Student Veteran Engagement at every college um, or community college because those uh, having that there has, has just been instrumental in, in uh, maintaining a – positive outlook and uh, being successful and when you run into these barriers that it's hard for other people to understand because they're just not veterans. They haven't experienced what veterans have experienced and they don't quite understand the the challenges veterans can face. So I, I would say that would be it, that we, we get these more offices and more Charlie Fosters at colleges. Well, both of you obviously have been very successful. Uh, you're certainly testaments for William and Mary and the job they're doing supporting student veterans, which kind of leads me into uh, my next question, and that would be there are going to be people hearing this podcast who are currently in the military who are thinking about getting out, beginning their own education, their own higher education, and they think about the various options out there. They're aware of William and Mary, but they say, gee, that's – you know, it's a public ivy. That's, that's a that's a very intimidating place. Tremendous education, but I'm not sure if I could, you know, can could 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 make that jump from where I am right now. Maybe you know, someone just a high school education, few college classes under their belt. What advice would you give to that military member, that veteran right now who's thinking about, you know, the William and Mary option? What would they need to do to be successful to make that? transition from where they are right now to where someone like Anthony is right now, succeeding academically on track to graduate with a very high GPA and then going on to graduate school or, you know, fulfilling whatever, you know, ambitions you happen to have. What advice would you give for that person who's looking at going to William & Mary, but maybe they're not quite convinced they could, uh, they could make that uh, transition? Well, I would say, um, and they know this from their training, that you got to walk before you run. And um, so Anthony's path as a very successful, he is too humble. He is a very successful William and Mary student. Anthony's path through Thomas Nelson is a great example of that. So, um, you know, you get into the college environment, you get into balancing your schedule with your personal life um, and attending four classes at the same time keeping assignments straight, keeping reading straight, and then, you know, proceed into William and Mary because there is a uh, admissions uh, agreement with Virginia Community College System and Thomas Nelson to, um, to admit students with, you know, a B plus average. And so I would say, you know, that is something that everyone can consider. It's a free application also, <laughs> so you can just apply. I don't know, it doesn't hurt to apply. And just like um, we have a great point of contact over in the career center, we have a great point of contact over in the transfer admissions uh, role, who is um, somebody I work closely with to make sure to smooth that process as much as humanly possible. And I'm happy to talk to anybody who's listening who doesn't believe me on the phone or in person if we can defeat COVID fast enough for their liking to, to discuss this path. And I've done it before to encourage people to, to go where they want. You know, if they want a liberal arts education, which means one that's broad and you certainly learn, you know, the, the field that you wanna go into, but you also dabble in things that make you a really well-rounded intellectual, um, then, then, you know, William and Mary is a place they should consider. And, um, but I believe military students can accomplish anything that they want. People who have participated in the military community have changed the world. Most of them have made a difference. You know, in in it, it, we could we are all competitively humble. Like Anthony and I could have a humble contest right in front of you and say, "Oh no, Anthony's career is much more impressive." Oh no, Charlie's career. We we always do that, but we should remember the the great accomplishments that we have in our background when it comes time to be ambitious and apply for college admission or apply for that job. 
you know, again, Anthony's very humble, but his internship that he just got was highly competitive and he was selected. And I think that's a testament to his hard work. And I want to encourage other military and veteran students who have worked hard before and will again to try for whatever it is that their heart desires. Talk about the uh, financial aspects, if we can. Uh, military folks coming out obviously have their various versions of the GI Bill. Gives you 36 months of benefits, housing allowance. Uh, I'm sure you probably get questions from prospective students with a military background who say, am I going to be able to financially swing it using it my GI Bill benefits at William & Mary? I'm actually going to call upon Anthony to talk about his, he actually helped them. He, he has a calculator that he's designed to help people plan using their GI Bill months. So I think that is a great way to kind of think about one's fears about being able to do it in a certain amount of time or whatever. And so Anthony, would you, would you mind telling them a little bit about what you designed? Sure. So what I designed for this next incoming group, we're going to, we're going to be beta testing it on this, the spring group here um, is, is a tool that will help you visualize the data that revolves around your GI bill. And that, that includes laying out not only your academic planning, but how your academic planning affects the money that you will be receiving, whether it be for book stipends or housing. Uh, a, a really big uh, eye opener for me when I came in and started using my GI bill was that they're not counting monthly. They're, they're prorating it daily. So they, you know, we're so conditioned to this, oh, you get 36 months of college. So you run into these issues of like, well, hold on a second. I was in from here to there. Why didn't I get the full money? Um, how much am I going to get if it's split in half? Are you going to charge me a whole month? And, you know, people are planning from this monthly mindset when in reality it's prorated daily. So you should be planning via, you know, a, a day, day to day basis and how that actually carries through to what, what kind of money you're going to receive. So this calculator takes all that into account, keeps track of how much GI Bill you have left so that you can plan um, your future academic endeavors appropriately and not break the bank. Uh, we've seen already at other schools such as Columbia, and it's happened to a few William & Mary students in the past where you, you're going through a semester and get a check in the mail because it turns out you ran out of benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, that until recently, it was just too difficult to for a single person to juggle all the data you need to analyze to avoid that situation. So I think that my tool will be able to help prevent that from ever happening again, as it, it did for me, because I learned that prior to the COVID where they cut the semester short, I was actually going to run a GI, run out a GI bill my senior, my last semester. Um, but ironically, the COVID cut um, the semester shorter. So now I'm going to be dead on, but um it showed me, though, that, hey, you know what? My final semester, I'm not going to have a full GI Bill. I better start planning. I better start seeking scholarships. I better start now. And by being proactive, by having that visualization, I could interpret the data to say, okay, well, I need to act at this point to secure money to close the gap. So I'm not paying out of pocket, you know? And and that's something we've been building, and, and we're going to finally launch it this uh, upcoming semester for all the incoming William Mary veteran. It sounds like a really great innovation. I think it also uh, may be kind of a uh, maybe a billboard there, or it may point in the direction of, you know, folks really need to begin their planning in earnest, you know, well before they hang up the uniform. And to go back to what Charlie was talking about a moment ago, the transfer option. If somebody's still on active duty and able to take classes, uh, take classes with a local community college, use those TA benefits, roll them into a degree plan, work hard, and then make sure you're able to meet the entrance requirements for a school like William & Mary. So when you do arrive on campus in Williamsburg, you may already have the associate's degree under your belt, and those credits will transfer into the academic program you're looking for at a place like William & Mary, or at least some of them will. And therefore, maybe the financial pressure won't be quite as great because you're further along in your academic journey than someone who was, let's say, unable to take classes while on active duty, and they're really starting off from square one. Right, and the one thing I'll add to that is um, military and veteran students are really outstanding at asking questions. 
because they really love to have the information and factor that into the strategic plan. So I want to encourage them to continue to do that after the military and ask questions of the Gary Pounders of the world or at academic advising offices or financial aid offices. Um, you know, Anthony mentioned applying for scholarships. We have a dedicated veteran scholarship called the Patriot's Dream that can be awarded on top. You know, one of the, one of the things a GI Bill recipient should consider is scholarships that are non-tuition because then you get paid that on top and it doesn't inter interfere with the GI Bill. And that's when you wanna rely on the GI Bill school certifying official, the coordinator for those, um, you know, so asking those questions is something that is absolutely beneficial and that practice of doing a great job of that in the military should continue after the military. And I already challenged everybody to call me, <laughs> you know, so that's what we're here for. That's what the academic advisors are here for. Uh, Anthony gave a shout out to the librarians. That's what they're here for. And we can think about those all being tools in our academic toolbox. You know, people who are there to, um, to support students, that's why they work in the field that they work in. And um, if, if military and veteran students don't utilize their services, they're actually denying those people learning about the military and learning about the great kind of people that I worked with when I was in, or that ACE is currently, you know, we're able to share those stories the more we interact with those people. So we can think about it that way to just take advantage of these resources that are here. Absolutely. Looking ahead, what do you see on the horizon for your office there at William & Mary Charlie? What are some of the things you would like to add maybe in terms of programs and services in the months and years ahead? So we have a really exciting opportunity. Um, we received an anonymous donation from an alumna. So uh, a William & Mary alum donated $10 million to Veterans Initiatives at William & Mary. So it will sustain my office, which is super exciting for me, but it'll also build new programs. So we envision the Women Mary Veteran to Executive Transition Program. We just hired a special assistant to President Rowe for Military and Veteran Affairs, Bob Merkel. And he and I and others on campus are gonna work to um, synchronize services for military and veteran students at Women Mary and expand and offer new programs, certificate programs, and, um, and all sorts of new initiatives to take advantage of the visionary donation. So I wish I could thank the person in, in, by name, <laughs> but it's an anonymous donation. But um, so what that's just gonna do is, is be able to transform what's possible for military and veteran students at William & Mary. So we're very excited about that. It couldn't come at a better time for, um, for students who are separating from the military who want to, you know, blaze their own path and, and do something unique, we're going to be able to do that uh, coming soon. For military members and vets who maybe have an interest in attending uh, William & Mary, how can they best reach you, Charlie? Okay, so uh, my email address is ct, as in Charlie Tango, foster at wm, as in whiskeymike.edu. And the office line, which even during COVID-19 forwards to my, my computer um, through magic, <laughs> is 757-221-2167. And they can find all sorts of great info on our website, which is www.wm.edu forward slash veterans. And we will post that information on the Thomas Nelson Military webpage at tncc.edu as well. And we're hoping that once we get into the post-COVID environment that we can have, you know, more interaction with your officer at William & Mary so we can help more military members and veterans make that transition from TNCC to William & Mary. Um, Anthony, you're already a senior. You're doing very well. We heard a moment ago you received or were picked for a very prestigious um, internship. You're getting your undergraduate degree in uh, data analytics. What is going to come up for you after that? Well, um, depending on how well my internships go, and I like the field that um, I'm kind of delving into, I might uh, just take employment through that company. Uh, I, I still, I'm, I'm currently in a prep course with the GRE right now, as I, I have, intend to take the GRE as a backup. I know they've waived GREs due to COVID at some colleges, but um, 
you know, I intend to pursue my graduate's degree as um, many prestigious colleges offer a data analytics master's that's one year. So I, I figure why not? You might as well, right? Might as well just get it all done while I'm already here and doing the college thing instead of coming back in my 40s and having to do it again. Uh, you know, going to college when you're older as it is, is a challenge. So I'm trying to just wrap this up. So I will either go into a graduate's program or right to work. It, it really depends on how that GRE score comes down and um, what what's offered at the end of the day. What kind of uh, job ideally would you like to have once your education is complete? Well, I, I'm looking at uh, civil service careers to continue my carry over my military time because I can, you know, be done in 12 years with my first retirement check. Um, and then transition to the private sector with uh, cybersecurity and things like that. Definitely sounds like a very uh, challenging and interesting career down the road for you. Gentlemen, I want to thank both of you for taking time to appear on the podcast today. Any final words for our military and veteran students out there looking to um, attend William & Mary someday? I would just say um, that I know that it's that no one will admit that uh, transitioning out of the military leads to, to fear, but it is some kind of fear of the unknown. And I want to encourage anyone who is thinking about their plan to, again, rely on uh, all the people that are out there to help advise them on their plan. And if I feel fear, then I can return to um, a place that I'm confident in to restore my confidence. And so I want everybody to really fall back on the great work they did while they were in the military as a source of confidence going forward, because it does translate. And I have seen it. Anthony's an example of that. Gary, you're an example of that. I definitely want everybody to believe in their background as a predictor of future success. And if, if you use my phone number, I will help you do that specifically for you. So that is what I want to encourage everybody to do. Anthony, any final words from you? Yeah, I would just like to add that if you're thinking about coming to William and & Mary and you want to be here, you belong here and we want you here. And I have faith that you will get here. And when you do, you will not be alone. You will have support and resources that we will work together to make sure you're a success. Some very um, positive words, some very encouraging words indeed. We want to thank you again for your time. We've been talking with Charlie Foster, who's Director of the Office of Student Veteran Engagement at the College of William & Mary, and Anthony Ventura. Anthony is a Navy veteran who began his educational career here at Thomas Nelson then moved on to William & Mary, doing exceptionally well up there right now and poised for great things once he completes his education. Gentlemen, again, thanks for being on the podcast today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, Gary. Do take care, Gary. It's great talking to you. Great talking to you as well. This has been At Ease, the military podcast of Thomas Nelson Community College. I'm Gary Pounder. Thanks a lot for listening.